Hello, my friend, and welcome to another What I Eat in a Week. And we're starting out strong with a nice little protein smoothie and my workout class. But before we get all into the nitty gritty, because I could just obviously go over all the food that I'm eating, but more importantly, what I want and my hope for you, even in these videos, is not only you get inspiration for different, fun, easy, quick, high protein, nourishing meal ideas, but one of my really just life verses is in 3 John that says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Won't you come on all the later? and really that you would see nourishment as something so much deeper than food and yes that we get to nourish with our meals like i love this mineral tea it's so nourishing there's so many minerals in it it's incredibly easy to make but more importantly, even when you're making your meals, even when you're just living your life, your whole entire life is your medicine and is your nourishment. Have you got something to say now? Cause I've been holding my breath. I love a good classic breakfast like this, and I really like to start my day off by front loading with protein. I've noticed it's just made the biggest difference in my blood sugar and in my hormones. This really is the way that I have completely changed my hormonal health and is really focusing on making sure that I'm getting enough protein throughout the day. So had a nice classic breakfast, and then I made this really simple bean steak salad that is amazing. Beans are great for our hormone health, specifically our gut health lots of fiber which helps with estrogen clearance and then for dinner i made a really simple like very simple chicken with just some veggies i mean i just can't get more simple than that but i actually cooked the chicken at like 425 on that rack and it got it really crispy and then i mixed the two date lady sauces They talk about how uh, spiritual maturity and being able to bring and express your emotions to God. Mm -hmm. Like the psalmists do, being super joyful yes. and expressing thanksgiving and gratitude. And there's also sorrow and anger and frustration. And, you know, it's like being able to uh, communicate your feelings to God. I feel honored you trust me to have your emotions expressed. And then I thought about that more and I was like, wow, that was actually really beautiful. Yeah. It's very characteristic of God. This day I had friends come into town, so had breakfast. This was the best, this is the best gluten-free burrito ever. So it just has like eggs and sausage and it's nice and filling and there's some sweet potatoes in there. I stopped by the farm and I was particularly not really feeling a big lunch on this day. And I, but I wanna show you even throughout this day how even just like listening to your body. So I made a nice hearty bowl with some bee pollen and some and a protein yogurt, but then the blackberries, this is really full of fiber and protein. And then micronutrients from the bee pollen, it makes it incredibly nutrient dense. Tonight we are making one of my favorite dishes of all time. I made this, I think like a couple weeks ago, accidentally throwing different ingredients together and it turned out to be one of my favorite dishes that I've ever made. It's kind of fancy, but it's so simple. It's so simple, but it sounds very fancy. Garlic rainbow chard with parsnip puree and then the scallops and it is so phenomenal. If you want an easy dinner that's genuinely easy and simple to make, but that tastes like a restaurant, this is it. So anyway, as simple as that lunch is, it's very, my little lunch from earlier, but we'll talk about dinner in one second. But the lunch from earlier was very balancing. It's very, very balancing and supportive to hormone health. Even something as simple as that, because it can be easy if you're not really feeling hungry to skip meals, but supporting blood sugar regulation is such a simple, powerful way to really nourish your body. And so getting in that protein and fiber was wonderful. Now for this dinner tonight, I literally just boiled the parsnips and you can see I just splash in some cream and some milk and then a little bit of ghee and I just use my immersion blender and it is phenomenal with some fresh thyme and salt so 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 good and then the gar then that's it literally i just cooked up the garlicky chard and the scallops done so simple thank you very much this looks incredible yeah you're a really good cook that's 
That's right. Oh my goodness. The top Cambria meal. I think I could serve this at a restaurant. Yeah. I think I officially like parsnips more than potatoes. This is phenomenal. Thank you for doing that. Wow. It was really easy. Okay, so this is another one of my favorite fancy but super simple dessert ideas. There is something about fresh whipped cream and I add in a little bit of vanilla bean paste and then either some maple syrup or honey or you could even do a little bit of coconut sugar. Nothing beats it. It's so flavorful, light, yet decadent and just, and look how beautiful it is. And it's just so fun. So that's our little dessert tonight. Look how fluffy that whipped cream looks, yum. Now you can kind of see the intuitive eating come in here really strongly because I wasn't really hungry for a big lunch, but then before dinner, I got so hungry. So I really just honored my body and I made a random plate of food. I'm obsessed with burrata and honey and apples. So good. So the next day I had my pre-workout breakfast, which is my high protein yogurt and then the bee pollen, which this is one of my favorite things to regularly include in my diet is bee pollen. It is so rich in protein and B vitamins, really everything that your cells need. And again, this looks very simple, but it's very strategic because I added enough fruit to where I'm getting almost basically 10 grams of fiber first thing in the morning and then of course I enjoyed my breakfast with my daily bread and it was such a wonderful morning. And then this is my post-workout breakfast. So fueled up before, and the, but uh, let me tell you something. This is the best scramble in the whole world. You caramelize your onions, throw in a little bit of tomatoes, uh, whip up your eggs with some fresh chopped dill. And I am telling you, when you top this with some feta, and I served it with a side of my mellow grapefruit, which I was never a fan of grapefruit until this, it is one of the most amazing things you could ever make. And then my strawberry matcha, this is so good. This is actually a recipe from Kristen Johns and I made it a few weeks ago and I am obsessed. The reason I didn't even have it in the beginning of the video is because I ran out of strawberries. So once I went to the farm, I got my strawberries and we restocked. So I cannot stop drinking this. And I'm gonna chat about it a little bit later on like all the health benefits, but it, it cause we're gonna really do a deep dive, but it is literally the best drink I've ever had in my life. So then I had a snack plate. I really like these little salmon strips and I am obsessed with burrata and honey and apples. It is a dream combination. I had another strawberry matcha, literally so good. And one of my favorite easy high protein lunches is just some tuna on gluten-free bread with some avocado oil mayo and then a side of fruit. Very easy, very simple, keeping nourishment so simple. And really you can't get an easier dinner in my opinion than fajitas, very simple. This is how to make the easiest, best chicken ever. High, sear it for two minutes on high each side. So that's four minutes total. Put the lid on for eight minutes on low and then you're gonna turn off the heat after eight minutes and just let it Finish cooking for 10 minutes. You're done. It's perfect every time. That's really good. I shredded my chicken in the pan. Get all the seasoning mm, mm. My meals this week have been so easy and fast to make. Yeah. So simple, but so flavorful. I feel like I'm crushing now. I'm loving it. I love this week's meals. Okay, more burrata and honey. And I'm telling you, I've been sleeping like a baby. So I love a good bedtime snack if you're feeling it. So... Again, my strategic and delicious huge bowl of fruit with uh, <laughs> the yogurt. It's just, it's so simple, but something as simple as starting your day with 25 to 30, really 30 grams, I like to aim for 30 grams of protein and 10 grams of fiber. Watch your life completely change from doing just that. 30 grams of protein, 10 grams of fiber. Of course, I had to have my strawberry matcha and then I made another one of these scrambles because they are so good, but I made it later on in the morning. So I like to do that too because it can be challenging to get enough protein, but this is a way that I find it's very simple, especially if you do yogurt or you start off with like a protein shake and then I have eggs 
or yogurt. And really, it's just an easy way for me to combine different proteins early on in the day to hit my protein goal every single day. So I do minimum 100 grams, but I, I really end up eating around like 120 to 130, sometimes 140 grams a day. And then I made a blueberry matcha this time. Same thing. I will leave the recipe that Kristen shared in the description box. I'll link to hers, but I cannot stop drinking this. Don't even ask me how many, what number matcha I'm on today. I've always loved matcha, but I made a strawberry matcha for the first time a few weeks ago. I am so hooked. I am so obsessed. But today, for the first time, I made a blueberry matcha. So I am so obsessed with the flavor. I cannot get over how delicious it is. It is so good. But I wanted to share with you something it's all gonna connect because this is so fascinating to me. But I, so this cycle, I had the strongest, best ovulation that I have ever had. My temperature chart, if you watched a couple of videos back, as you know, I'm just in a season of life of genuinely, when I even say preconception, I mean even deeper than that because no matter what you're trying to do with your health for hormones or anything, it doesn't even matter if your goal is to like grow your hair longer or it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It all comes down to healthy cells and cells getting the right nutrients and cells being protected. That's the two things that cells need. They need nutrients and they need to be protected. I mean, just to simplify, that's very simple. But I like simple because it helps me to understand things. So, because I felt very overwhelmed and very confused for many, many years. As you know, one of my last things that I mentioned was I really wanted to work on getting my temperatures up in my luteal phase because my thyroid numbers look really good and everything like that. But I just have not been able to really get my temperatures up in my luteal phase. And this is the strongest ovulation that I've ever had. And and just like where I'm at with it, I uh, it's the best temperatures, the best. It's just the it's that I've seen the biggest by far improvement in this specific cycle. And I know that everything that I've been doing has contributed and led up to this point. But specifically, it's really important. The number one thing that I did wrong for many years and the number one thing that I see a lot of people just don't know and it's a big mistake is they think that the problem is the solution. So for me, my problem was low progesterone. And I was told, obviously I've said this a million times, but the reason I say it is because I feel like no matter what you're trying to do, it makes everything make sense. So for me or low thyroid, I was told I have hypothyroid. I am hypothyroid and I was going to have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of my life. And that's the thing is that for many, many, many years, many years, I thought that my problem was the solution. Low progesterone, progesterone's the solution. Thyroid, thyroid hormone's the solution. But when those solutions didn't work for me and my body wasn't responding in the way that they should have been responding or the way it should have been responding, I became really just discouraged and frustrated because I'm like, why do I feel horrible on progesterone? Why is my body not responding? You know, even my progesterone a few months ago, seeing it at a, I can't remember, it was like over seven, which you wanna see it at an eight. I have never seen that kind of a number in my progesterone before. All that to say is that the solution is the cell. That is what it is. It's not the thyroid, it's not the progesterone, it's giving the cell what it needs. When you give your cell what it needs and you protect it from things that are trying to hurt the cell, then healthy cells, which you've heard me say a million times, but healthy cells make healthy tissues which make healthy organs, which make healthy organ systems, your endocrine system, your progesterone, your thyroid, your estrogen, everything like that, which make ultimately healthy organism. And that's the thing, is that the more I focused on progesterone or thyroid or whatever it was, the more I didn't see results, the more I didn't see changes in my progesterone and thyroid. But when I focused and I got clear on this hormonal system really roots down to a cellular, the cell. It roots down to the cell. That's when everything made sense for me. So I wanted to share something that I've specifically been doing. And it's funny because it, I just started craving it. I really just started craving it. I was like, it sounds so good to have a nice refreshing matcha. It just sounds so good. And that's the thing is that matcha is very, very high in polyphenols. Polyphenols are Basically, they're from the plant, they're from the matcha leaf, and they're from the tea leaf, and they are micronutrients that the leaf contains. So what is it? It's a nutrient. It's a nutrient that acts 
facts that can act as like an antioxidant. What's an antioxidant? And antioxidants help to prevent and fight oxidative stress. What is oxidative stress? Oxidative stress, oxidative damage. What is that? It's damage to the cell. And what do antioxidants do? What do these nutrients do? They help to protect against that. So what does it come down to? It comes down to the cell having the very two things that it needs, which is protection and which is nourishment through nutrients given to the cell to do what it needs to do. So these plant micronutrients, quite literally the polyphenols, are enabling and helping the cell to do the two things that the cell needs to do. It's providing nourishment, micronutrients, and again, acting as an antioxidant. They have very antioxidant-like properties which help protect the cell, which is so amazing. And I've been drinking so many matchas leading up to this ovulation. And I just gotta say, like I'm just fully being transparent with you. I, I tell you everything that I do, and I'm talking to you about this because I always wanna share, but I'm telling you, I have had the best ovulation that I've ever had, and it's interesting because I started researching into it, and there's a lot of egg quality supplements that are made that have and include the green tea extract. Look at the amount of polyphenols. I like their little cute little chart in here, but look at the amount of polyphenols. That is why they put the green tea extract into these egg quality supplements, but I could just, I'm just drinking the green tea. I'm just drinking it. And that's the thing is you can get it just from drinking the tea, just from having the matcha. That's how I've been having it in my diet. And that's the thing you don't, that's the, I love supplements and I'm so thankful for them. I truly am. But there is, again, I will say it again because there is nothing better than the food itself. The food is always going to be the most bioavailable, the way that God designed it. And how amazing, how absolutely amazing that there are literally foods that are so powerful for ourselves. I cannot stop drinking this. I have felt so good on it and it contains L-theanine. Wow, we're just really getting it. We're really going deep. I love doing these kind of chats because it's so helpful. And that's the thing is L-theanine is an amino acid that really helps your body with just feeling calm, relaxation. And so that's why so many people feel so good on matcha because you get the caffeine, you get such a, an amazing source of caffeine, but you get also an incredible source of L-theanine, which is that very calming, amino acid. So it really gives you, it, it is like the energy without the jitters. A lot of people don't do well on coffee for this reason. And that's the thing is that I really accidentally gave up coffee, but truly I have never, ever felt better. I didn't really even realize that it was kind of, and I will have the occasional latte, but as far as my day to day, I really like, I have not stopped drinking this watch up for weeks. This is the best tasting drink. I've ever had. I'm obsessed. I'm addicted to these. This one's my favorite one. This is, I've gotten so many questions. This is the Peak Sun Goddess Matcha. I love this one because it's specifically, it is quadruple screened. So literally quadruple screened for pesticides, okay? Heavy metals, toxic mold. So we all know my experience with mold. And so that's why this has been so great for me too. Like I've just felt so good drinking it. And they screen it for radioactive isotopes. It's literally the most pure matcha. And that's the thing is that mold is very prevalent in coffee, tea, you know, the farming practices are incredibly important. And specifically, they actually shade their matcha for longer, so it's higher in chlorophyll. And we all know my love for chlorophyll because chlorophyll is actually uh, very rich in copper. And we actually need copper for energy. And, and it's so good for skin health as well, like the health of your skin. I mean, don't even get me started on chlorophyll and copper with skin health. It's like, it's everything. I actually had a friend tell me about Peak years and years and years ago. So I have loved their matcha for such a long time and I've just rekindled my love for it recently. It's absolutely amazing. I love, love the taste. I love the way that I feel. And I just gotta say that I just really noticed the best and strongest ovulation that I've ever had this month. And I, I just don't find it to be a coincidence that as I've been researching and the more I learn and seeing those egg quality supplements and seeing these companies put in the green tea extract because it's so rich in the polyphenols for egg quality support, I'm like, I have been drinking 
so much matcha that is just really really cool to see my body responding because the body is always responding and i guess what okay this makes me feel so much better it actually says two to three servings a day recommended not me drinking my third matcha mm. you know what's weird too is my body would like crave multiple matchas like I would just like want another one. And today I wanted a third one. So I made a third one. I think that it, it tells a story of something so much bigger that God innately wove nourishment into the plants that grow from the ground. And that, you know, he just created and designed a world to nourish us. So the one thing that I'm going to consistently continue on with is my daily matcha. I just had to share that with you because I'm like, wow, I'm just seeing so much progress in my body and I'm absolutely loving this drink for spring. And just, this is my particularly favorite one. So they are so sweet. They are giving you 15% off of your order and they're gonna give you a little frother, which this frother is the most powerful, amazing frother that I've ever used. And they're also gonna give you a little cup so that you can make your own delicious matcha, your blueberry or your strawberry, or just your plain good old amazing matcha. So link will be in the description box. I love sharing what is working in my body and why it's working. I like to know why. I don't wanna just know what to do. I like to know why the what is working. Now we're chatting a lot, but I actually really wanna say one more thing. So let's just go over here really quick and we'll finish our little chat. Today is actually Mother's Day, the day that I'm filming this. And I was reading and I just had to share this with you. Bo and I were on a walk this morning and we came across this passage. And so we were talking about this on our whole walk. Okay, so this is Exodus 15 if you wanna read it. And this is in verse 22 at the end. It says, and they were three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara for they were bitter. So they were in this place of bitter water. And you think about life in the seasons of just, they're just, they're just bitter seasons in life. And so they come to this place, they call it Mara, which means bitter. They cannot drink the water. Moses cried out to the Lord and God showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. So God changes this bitter thing and makes it sweet. Something only God can do. But here's what really blows me away. You keep reading and at the end, so now they've traveled on from the place of Mara and they come to this place called Elim where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. And Elim means tree or strong tree. And specifically, you know, it's referencing to these 70 palm trees, this place called Elim, this oasis. And essentially that's exactly what it is. And this is what really just blew me away. You know, they're being left they're being led from this place of, of bitterness, of Mara, to this oasis out in the desert, this, this place called Elim. And this is what really blew me away. So, you know, tree, strong tree, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. This is out in the desert, the desert where nothing thrives. Nothing is supposed to grow. Nothing is supposed to be flourishing, if you will. And what really got me is looking up the actual definition of oasis. It means a fertile place in the desert, a fertile place in the wilderness, and God leading them from this place of bitter waters and doing something only he could do, which then turning it sweet, but then leading them onto a place called Elim, this oasis, this fertile place in the desert where there's 12 wells and there's palm trees everywhere. There's 70 palm trees and there they camp and there they are refreshed right out there in the middle of the desert. And I, when I look back and I feel like I'm gonna cry, but when I look back, I actually took a photo when I found out I was pregnant. I had, I, I had opened up my Bible and it literally just opened up to this place that I had written in the margins that said, take heart if you're in the wilderness. And something along the lines of, for God usually does his most powerful work in the wilderness. And at the time, you know, this was right after I had found out and I really thought about my journey and how doctors said, you'll never be able to even get pregnant. You'll never even be able to be pregnant. And just feeling like, wow, this is so amazing. And obviously I had no idea the wilderness that I was about to walk into and enter into. And yet I can really say that God has done that very thing in my own life. And it just literally <laughs> fills me with like joyful tears because I see the bitter things that he has made sweet. And I see him even in the wilderness in a place where it should be dry and weary and, and a land where there just, there is no water. I see him, I see this fertile place, this place of, of growth. And I just wanna say like, 
no matter what is going, no matter where you're at, especially on Mother's Day, I find it so interesting that this just so happens to be on Mother's Day that no matter what in your life, I just hope that you find that God is that is that refreshment for you that sometimes even especially in motherhood we can look to the ultimate outcome of of the child obviously and that's the thing is that i have i have come to a place in my own life and this is just in my own heart and obviously like i just this is a very vulnerable thing to share because i know that it's such a deep it's it's such a beautiful and beautiful dream um to want a child and to want a family but I've come to a place in my own life that I'm just so incredibly satisfied. I'm so satisfied by the love of God and the love of God alone. And I, no matter what area of my life, there is nothing, there is no area of life that fulfills that other than God himself. I just want to encourage you that maybe God is making a way for us to flourish even in the wilderness even in the places that are dry and weary, the land where there is no water, that he is a God of, of flourishing and that he even can take the bitter waters and make them sweet. And then he can lead us on and lead us in and lead us further and farther. And maybe you would say, this is this is wilderness. This is not a place where I see the, the, where, where fertile ground really should even be. But yet God makes an oasis, a fertile place in the middle of the desert, a place where growth and new life begins in some place that would be so un so unexpected that he supersedes he supersedes our understanding maybe you don't see maybe you don't understand maybe you're on the way maybe you're like in the middle you know you're in the middle from mara to elam and you don't see it yet and you're not understanding and that's and and yet you're being led you're being led to an oasis and a place of of flourishing and and i believe that I believe that the hope that we carry with us along the way is probably the most important thing that we have is the hope and the faith that we are flourishing even when we cannot see that God is doing something new even when we don't understand. So I just really wanted to share that with you and I thought that that was really sweet and very special because of our word. I should have put this in my flourishing mug. Yeah. Cute mom. Yes, it's so cute. So we did. Sparkling water, yes. mint, Ooh, sprig of rosemary, okay. blackberries. It's, first of all, it's beautiful. Blackberries, blueberries, rosemary spring uh -huh. in a crystal little glass. I mean, look how pretty. I think Meester wants some. Oh, me gizzard would love to have a little. Cambriette. All right, so try it out. Master mocktail. Uh -huh. And how's Bose over there? He this. On the Cheers. Happy Mother's Day. That's very good. <laughs> This is one of my favorite quick, easy, high protein dinners. I'm obsessed with my little R Place Instant Pot situation. It is so good. And I just add in all of these ingredients that I showed here, like a splash of each. And then I put it on low. You can, you can, well, here's the thing. I sear it first on the sear setting. And then I just set it to slow cook for medium or high. I think I wish I would have rather done high this time, but it's a go-to for short ribs, very easy. And I just got some local grass-fed short ribs. So then I made sort of like a second breakfast lunch. It was kind of a weird, a weird day. And so, but I got in my protein. I snuck in my colostrum in there. By the way, I kind of forgot. I sneak it throughout the week, so I didn't always show. But I take that every single day. And this was a really high-protein meal with the grass-fed sausage. I love a good runny egg with asparagus especially in springtime when it's fresh in season the asparagus so good and then of course yet another strawberry matcha <laughs> grass-fed short ribs with some green beans and asparagus and then 
whipped up some potatoes and added in chives. Raw milk, so easy. Mm. I always add in a little bit of arrowroot flour into the sauce that the meat was cooking in to thicken it up and then I pour it on top. Comes out so well. Potatoes are mm -hmm. pretty amazing. wild, huh? Okay, you would not believe how good these protein pancakes are. I did two bananas, two eggs, added in half a cup of the vanilla prime protein from Equip. You could do any flavor that you want though. And then I did half a cup of green banana flour. And then, well, actually I did like a quarter cup of the banana flour and then a quarter cup of just gluten-free, the blend that I make. And then I added in some eggshell powder for calcium, whipped up those pancakes with some eggs and then the side of the grass-fed sausages. This was so high in protein and absolutely, I just loved a classic breakfast this week, really good. I tried out these ancestral meatballs this week, which has the liver and heart, which is very high in CoQ10, and the liver is really high in B vitamins, very essential for liver health, especially estrogen and just metabolism in general, very important for detoxification. So I served this over the leftover potatoes with the burrata and apples, yet again, really good combination, and another matcha, of course. Okay, one cup of raw milk. You could do any milk that you really want. And then two cups of the raw cream. And then I added two... And then I added two egg yolks with a little bit of vanilla bean paste. And then I just added in probably like just less than half a cup of maple syrup. And then I put in about a rounded quarter cup of cacao. Absolutely amazing. I blended it up. That's my ice cream base. And then this ice cream attachment, if you have a KitchenAid, it is amazing. I have never made true homemade ice cream like I have, but not very traditional like this in this before. And oh my gosh, it is life changing. Won't be long. I'm there before the setting sun for you to fall into my arms. What I call like a random pantry dinner where I just use up a bunch of things in the pantry that I have to use. So I did these whole peeled tomatoes from Thrive, paprika, cumin, and chili, and then these jovial beans that are already soaked and pressure cooked. So they're properly prepared already. I added in a tablespoon of chili powder, a couple teaspoons of paprika, and then about a teaspoon or yeah, like around a teaspoon of the cumin with a whole onion and some ghee. I threw in a little bit of fresh garlic, chopped up all those peeled tomatoes, this seriously was so easy threw in the beans the kidney beans and then I just cooked up some local grass-fed meat and I added that in stirred it up added in the roasted I did I needed to use up these sweet potatoes and uh, squash and so I just roasted that for like 30 minutes at 425 and then I used actually my yogurt for sour cream because we didn't have any and it turned out so good tastes amazing I really like yeah here we go Wait, what? Really mix that in there. I'm surprised. Yeah. This surprised me. This is phenomenal. It's like a sneak attack yeah. of flavor. I'm like genuinely shocked at how amazing that this is very flavorful. Yeah. And I'm not the biggest fan of chili. I do feel like it needs to be amazing. And this is amazing. I'm a name. They telling me to head your way. Oh. Down your own oh my gosh, look at that. Gates. Keep your eyes on the horizon. I was look looking to the long when I'd already found my home. Won't be long. Our final day, I really was loving a classic breakfast this week. I think because we got the local jam when we were in Oregon. If you haven't watched that video, that is such a fun video to watch. But that jam is a local, it's amazing. It's wild blackberry. And so I had that on gluten-free bread with the eggs and then the sausage. And of course I had to make yet another strawberry matcha. This is accidentally one of the best things I've ever made. And again, I'm not really a huge chili person.
It would not be fitting if I did not do a fun little recipe giveaway so that you can make all of your delicious recipes. I love this. I love this thing. It's actually kind of funny. I didn't use it this week and it makes cooking a little bit more nourishing for me if I'm trying to follow a recipe and I don't have to be on my phone. It's just nice to read a recipe. And so you're gonna get that along with the recipe cards that go with it. These are super cute. And then of course you have to get a flourishing mug, the flourishing mug club. These are at Target, I'm telling you. Um, obviously I'm trying to give them away in as many videos as I can, but so cute. I know so many of you said that you went out and bought it immediately, so. Anyway, we're, we're in our, this is, a, this is the cutest thing ever. Flourishing Mug Club. Hannah began it all. She gifted me one. And so I just keep going and buying them for you because it's so cute. And then, of course, I'm giving you a copy of Milk and Honey, which it's like you get the nourishment, you know, and then you also get the soul nourishment. So this I wrote to truly help you taste the goodness of God in every season of your life. And I love this so much. It goes through Genesis, through Revelation. It's a great companion to just reading and studying, and it really is just designed to help you see and experience the goodness of God through his word. So anyway, that's what you're going to win, and all you have to do is leave a comment on this video with a heart at the end of your comment, and then that way I will know that you are entering to win. And then don't forget, you're going to get 15% off of your peak matcha. Seriously, I just got to say I am obsessed not only with the taste but the more i dug into just the benefits of matcha i could really see like wow no wonder my body has just been feeling so good and is so nourished and i just don't think it's a coincidence at all that i've had the strongest ovulation that i ever have on all the cycles that i've been tracking this year so very fascinating and really just amazed at god and how he created the the very things that grow from the ground to nourish our bodies so I'm truly in awe of it, but 15% off and you get the frother and you get a cute little mug, which is amazing. It really is the cleanest matcha ever. And that's something that really is important when you are looking, if, especially for a daily drink that you're consuming regularly. I'm just so, I, I love Peak that they do quadruple screen it. So they're really making sure that you're drinking the cleanest, highest, just the most pure matcha that you possibly can. And I do believe that those are one of the things uh, as far as sourcing and if you're, when it comes to the daily, when it comes to the daily things, that to me is something that's really important. So making sure that there's no mold in it, making sure that the pest, you know, there's no pesticides, making sure it's truly an organic high quality drink that you're consuming so that you get all the benefits without all those other stuff. So absolutely love them. And not to mention it is the best tasting matcha that I've ever had. So I just love it in every possible way. I've been obsessed with it and I'm just super excited that they're giving you a code and cute little, you know, frother and mug along with it. So link will be in the description box. I love you so much. It was so fun hanging out with you this week and I cannot wait to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.